updates to those checklists so people can um, submit information or ideas or suggestions. What we what we are seeing is sometimes when you actually put it into practice, there are things that um, don't work the way that maybe any business intended it to, or maybe that we intended it to in that moment, and and or there are better ideas that continue to surface nationally or locally, um, and we can make adjustments. So feedback comes in again. We take the feedback once a week, try to review that feedback with the group. Um, update the checklist and post those post those updates weekly right, thank you uh questions are that's a lot of detail that but i try to i think it's important for people to have a good sense for the 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 ongoing nature of that process and the number of people that feed in and i know we're getting some questions of well i sent my ideas in and i haven't heard directly back and what's happening is we're grouping those in sectors and using that feedback and then and then moving forward as a sector so um it is possible Possible that there are some people that have sent in feedback and not heard directly back. That feedback has been captured as part of a sector path. It may not be the one-off discussion. Uh, and if, if, you've got, if you've got feedback um, that you'd like to provide, main.gov slash DECD is the best place to go. Um, you've also done a nice job of just compiling um, the governor's updates, the checklists, a lot of good information on that page, main.gov um, forward slash DECD. Uh, let's talk quarantine. Love the portals, but the portals allow us to track information and, and easily move it around to get sectors together and to get geographies together and to look at it from a number of different ways. So I know the portal may not feel super personal to people. I assure you we're looking, we're pulling them twice a day and reviewing them. Um, it just keeps it aggregated as opposed to emails to a bunch of different people. And then it's hard to keep those organized. It's also hard to get back to people in kind of a group fashion. So um, if people can try to use the portal, that would be helpful. Well, and I think I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up um, because it's good for everybody to understand that um, you are receiving their messages, their input, uh, and, and you are, it, it is making it, um, an impact. Uh, you're using it um, as, as you're making these decisions. So that's that's good for everybody to hear. A uh, couple of hot topics, um, certainly. Uh, one is quarantine, the 14-day quarantine um, mm -hmm. situation. Can you speak up to speed on, on where that stands and and perhaps what, what you're looking at around that? Yeah, yeah. so, you know, the, the tourism sector is incredibly important to our economy. And 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 also right in in its inherent nature attracts people from other parts of the country into our little world here and so normally in a normal summer we go from 1.3 million people to 16 million people um very few other states have kind of that dramatic swing of numbers of people um and so it creates an interesting right that's why it's such a strong economic engine, but it creates an interesting challenge for us in this moment because that's also where some of that risk comes in because you have the travel components, you have congregation components, um, you have lots of different people interacting with other different people as opposed to kind of family sectors or, or kind of consistent groupings. So um, the quarantine is a way, is, is one of the few tools to look at how do you how do you try to make sure people are not carrying the virus um, because you can be asymptomatic and transmit it? Um, so that's what the quarantine is for. That's kind of why it's out there. We've kind of consistently looked at testing or other scientific methods and or quarantine. Um, so there are a lot. There were some other choices there. The science isn't quite there yet. So we we continue down the path of. Um, we feel really strongly we have to keep both main residents and tourists safe. And we have to try to create an option for these businesses to continue to, to operate. Um, and, and that balance is an everyday discussion around, you know, where, where is that and how do we keep it moving forward? So um, I, quarantine is absolutely a difficult part of this discussion. And, and I think um, there, there will be ongoing discussion there about how we continue to move that forward. One of the questions we've heard, uh, there's several, um, has to do with retail and retailers um, and, and trying to understand why is it that some retailers can be open and others yep. can't. Um, could you just speak to that question? 
Yeah, so before this past Monday, I think what it was were initial businesses that were designated as essential. Either they carried groceries or they carried kind of home, home um, products that were required to kind of fix or build or, you know, have uh, emergency repair type stuff and anybody that could support telecommunications or remote office work and those types of things. That was the grouping um, before Monday. On this past Monday, uh, we opened retail in all 12 counties that do not have community transmission. Um, and those retailers are now open under the same guidelines that the essential retail were open before. All right, thank you for that. Um, masks, let's talk about masks. You know more about masks than you probably ever thought you'd have to learn about, um, about masks. But several questions that we've received are uh, just regarding masks and PPE um, and for businesses who will now be required to, um, to provide masks. Uh, is the state um, providing any assistance sourcing um, required PPE? Uh, and, and a follow-up question that I've heard is about um, mask enforcement, if you will. Yeah. Um, so I'll toss let's both take, of them out. Yeah, <laughs> let's take the first one first. Um, the state won't be procuring PPE for businesses. Um, we do procure PPE for first responders. Um, we are working on some options for long-term long -term care facilities. Um, health, think healthcare generally and first responders. We certainly do that work. Um, what we, what we think we can do or what we'd like to do, right, is there are a lot of main manufacturers who have changed and adjusted their manufacturing to be able to, to produce PPE. And certainly we encourage main businesses to, to buy those products first because that, you know, continues to support the main economy and, and that's critically important. Um, so I'd say that's one piece. Um, the only support probably that we'll, we'll have for PPE is we do have a really clear chart now on what that means because we talk about PPE as though it's one thing. The reality is there are all levels of PPE and, and certain things are appropriate in a commercial setting, certain things are appropriate in different commercial settings, and then healthcare providers have a different set. So um, the type of uh, PPE that, that would be utilized by many of these checklists are going to be the um, the more co consumer or low grade commercial lens um, that are a little bit easier to come by. Certainly, hand sanitizer is sometimes a challenge um, to come by, but there are um, those are the types of things you'd see on a on a checklist. And then the mask enforcement, I think, was your other question. Right, right, right. Yeah. So the executive order requires that you wear a mask in public if you're going to be in any kind of confined space. Um, unless you have a medical condition. Mm. And so that is the enforceable law under the executive order. Um, we intentionally did not ask businesses to enforce that law on their consumers because we thought that was an unfair position. And we'd seen what some other states had done and, and it didn't necessarily go particularly well. What we have said or for your employees, you have to enforce that for your, your own employees. Um, again, unless they have a medical condition, but um, certainly not, um, we didn't expect the business community to enforce that on their customers. Now they can enforce that on their customers if they choose to, if they feel like that's something they want to do, they certainly can do that, um, but that, that's for local law enforcement. Uh, and another question related to that, because I received a couple of these, um, a customer goes into a business and the customer doesn't feel that the business is complying uh, with the checklist, with the mask requirements. What, what should a customer do in that situation? Yeah, so there is on our website, there is a place that you can report that. And then there's a process for us to reach out to them. And then the AG's office reaches out to them and then lo local law enforcement will get involved. Um, in some cases, particularly as we go into these new stages, what we see sometimes are, you know, there's a learning curve for people and or they are in the process of adjusting things, but they opened without everything being lined up. Um, we ask businesses not to do that, but we, we see a real spike on the first few days of any of these changes and then it starts to decline. Um, either people decide, you know, e either businesses, right, get all of the pieces in place and, and kind of quickly get on figuring it out 
and or I think consumers pick other choices. And so, you know, that that battle kind of slows down. But in the first few days of any adjustment, we do get a lot of calls. Thank you for that. And if, if you're just joining us, uh, we're here with Commissioner Johnson uh, from the Department of Economic and Community Development. I'm Deb Newman, uh, Bangor Region Chamber of Commerce. Shelly Sund is working behind the scenes to produce this. We are recording this, so if you joined us late or um, you, you wanna share this and watch it again, we will make this available on our Facebook page um, shortly after we wrap up. Uh, questions are starting to come in. and. <clears throat> Let's circle back to the uh, the topic of why certain counties could reopen. Um, Penobscot still hasn't was not in that um, early reopening list. Can you touch on that? And also, is there any chance that Penobscot could uh, be allowed to reopen earlier? <laughs> yeah, so I'm in an uncomfortable position, but <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, so what we looked at right is we're trying to add these safety layers to it um, and so if you look at the case count and the case spread we have four counties that have community transmission so it's what that means is the virus is transmitted without direct contact or without knowledge of direct contact so when when somebody tests positive it's usually what they do is they go through a list of where they've been and and likely there's some connection to somebody else that they know that has also tested positive um, and in some cases, that's not true. Um, and once you get to a certain level of that, and Dr. Shaw is way better at this than I am, so we can, we can get the actual clearer definition from Dr. Shaw, but the, this community transmission is one of the layers to say, okay, these 12 counties don't have community transmission. They are uh, likely to be safer to expand uh, and open additional economic options. Unfortunately, Penobscot County does have um, community transmission and so is not included. As counties either add into or fall off that list, certainly they are open for reevaluation. Thank you. Question about, let me find it, standby. Um, how, how is the administration working with local um, local cities, local governments, and municipalities? So Hannah Pingree in the governor's office is the lead on the local municipality work. I know she has ongoing and active um, dialogue with both MMA and a lot of towns. Um, obviously, I think the chambers work really closely with towns in most cases, and there's, there's that dialogue as well that then we end up um, we, you know, DCD ends up involved with as well. So uh, it's a little bit of a balance between Hannah and I trying to figure out what we can do to be helpful, what the questions are, and where the support can come from. This is an interesting question. Uh, it's a it's a legal one, <clears throat> um, and we've had when we've had uh, legal experts, it's been asked. So I don't I don't I don't know if you have any insight into this, but something to think about. For businesses who must now comply with new procedures to open and or operate, is the state of Maine considering any safe harbor protection for potential legal claims or regulatory violations brought by customers, visitors, employees, or the general public due to COVID-19 or the state imposed requirements? Any safe harbor protection for businesses? Interesting. Uh you know, I will defer that to our legal colleagues, but I can get an answer back to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's still some questions about uh, essential business status and what constitutes essential. Could you touch on that for yeah. us? Yeah, so we started, when we started, right, and you shut things down, the you create, I think we created like most people, these um, lists of, of things that we thought, okay, what can a community not survive without? Groceries, right? Mental health services, things that are really obvious that you need to, you need to find a way, gas stations, you need to find a way to do. Um, it's not that they don't add any impact because potentially you could come into contact with somebody at a grocery store, but you, if you don't have groceries, it's a bigger issue, right? And so, um, so we started down that path we've shifted away from that essential now because that's kind of gotten stabilized and you know those businesses are operating to 
sectors that now can start to operate on a variety of other metrics, but primarily around safety um, and safe access. Um, again, Shelly Sun, can I toss to you to just remind people how to, um, how to ask questions? Yes, um, we're having problems with Facebook Live. Um, there's quite a few people here in Zoom. You're welcome to just post your questions in the Q&A field and Deb will facilitate those questions. Okay, thank you. Let me look at the Q&A. Uh, let's see. Okay, we answered that one. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, again, if you've missed any part of this, we apologize that Facebook Live is giving us some technical challenges, but we are recording this, uh, so we will post it later. Um, here we go, standby. Uh, bigger question, do you honestly think our local economy will be able to recover after all of this? Certainly that's a, a question for our entire state and nation. Heather, what do you think, Commissioner Johnson? Sorry, I muted myself. Um, I think it's a I think it's a great question and a really difficult one to answer at this point. You know, we are working with national experts and national economists to try to look at what are the indicators, where what, you know, what are they seeing nationally? you know, what should we be looking at? Certainly talking to businesses. I think, um, I think it's gonna be a really difficult time. And I think, I do think though, we've got some opportunity, you know, some main businesses have been able to shift their work um, to create solutions for COVID-19. I think, you know, it's become really clear that um, people are gonna be able to maybe telework long-term, right? We've all gotten used to doing business differently and that may create some opportunities for some of our rural markets to attract people based on their assets um, and based on the safety and, and outdoor recreational assets that they have. Uh, if we can get infrastructure to them, broadband infrastructure primarily to them, then they may have less opportunities than we had before. Um, I think those are the, you know, again, traceable food systems, things like that, that become even more important in these moments in time that we have real access to take advantage of. Um, I think those are the silver linings, right? And where, where we'll see recovery more quickly. Um, I think the reality is we will have some uh, sectors that struggle and struggle long-term. Um, we are trying to work closely with those sectors to, to help in any way we can um, and look for some creative solutions. But um, I think the reality is we'll have, um, there will be difficulty long-term for some sectors. You have been uh, working with other uh, New England states, um, especially as we start looking at the tourism season. Uh, New Hampshire, Mass, um, even Canada are our neighbors. Um, what, what have those conversations uh, focused on? Um, I, a lot of them focus on kind of where we have commonality and try to look at, you know, I was on this morning with some folks from live venues and live entertainment, and it's a corridor, right? If you think about how those events happen, they happen in Massachusetts and they happen in New Hampshire and then they come to Maine and then they go on. They don't just come to Maine or just go to one of these other states. And so, um, you know, Boston, the mayor of Boston has said, no gatherings larger than 10 until after Labor Day. So if the anchor tenant, which could be Boston, doesn't have those events almost no matter what we do right we will be impacted by those decisions on the same hand um you know as we all open and look at the opening and protection um the more aligned we can be the easier i think it is for the business sector and for consumers to know what to expect um we all have very different needs as well and so i'd say our governors is really focused on the needs of main people and main businesses um aligning where we can Certainly we want to do that as much as possible, but, but I think, you know, if there's a question, she, she's certainly gonna align um, for our instincts first. For essential businesses, this was a question that came in. Um, is there a list of recommendations on your website for businesses that have been considered essential all along as far as uh, safety goes and what they should be um, implementing? So there is a general guidance checklist that I kind of would work for anybody who doesn't have a specific checklist. 
and that's what I would encourage them to use. We didn't go back and rework some of those protocols because we did some of that when they started going, like number of people in a grocery store, those types of things. Um, there were some sectors that we didn't do a lot of work with around, around guidance, and so they should for now use the general guidance. And we're getting um, more retail questions, um, Commissioner Johnson. There's, there's, there's still some, um, I don't say confusion, but questioning why uh, a large retail business can open up when a small business can um, implement the same safety protocols. Uh, it's frustrating when you're, I'm reading this, you're a business that can meet all the safety requirements at the same big box store is meeting, but we're a small retail business and we can't reopen. Could you speak? Right. To Thank you. Yeah, certainly, certainly understand that one, um, which is why we were able to move retail, all retail in these non-community transmission markets. Some of the, some of the staging is about how many people you have doing things at one time. Um, and so, you know, when you went to the initial piece, you shut everything down and that, and now we're pulling layers back, um, as quickly as possible. And so in non-commute transmission markets, that doesn't exist anymore. All retail can be open. All retail can use the same guidelines. Um, and, and people are moving more openly in those markets for markets with community transmission. Um, there's some concern about, about having that many people moving around that much for things that aren't right, aren't really aligned to the stay safer at home, right? You need to go out to do certain things. The rest of the things we should, we should try to be um, staying, staying as still as possible. So again, for Penobscot County, because our retailers are not able to open, right. um, can a business, a, a business can submit a proposal to DECD, correct? To talk they about- can. They okay. can, again, we're putting the retail sector and moving in groups. Um, there's very little one-on-one -on -one exception work happening. Uh, you know, it'd be really hard to keep that extent, but, but recognize that, that we do recognize that that's, you know, not the answer. A lot of retailers in these community transmission markets want to hear, um, right now the designation is June 1st. Um, and, and that continues to hold and we're certainly looking to see are there options for us to pull that, pull that into May. Yeah, one of our members, for example, is a bridal shop um, and they have brides and proms and they're really trying to do everything they can to um, assist their customers. Uh, but, you know, they're hoping that they can potentially open, reopen their doors in some way, shape or form prior to June 1. Yeah, I think weddings are really difficult, one, across the board, you know, we're hearing from tourism businesses as well at events and certainly from brides that they want to have more than 50 people, they want to have them sooner, you know, they're, and, and I mean, if this is a major life event, the last thing we want to do is stand in the way of a major life event, right? We want it to be as joyous and as, as scripted as they want it to be and not play a role in that. Um, the I, I just think the situation we're in doesn't much of that is, is normal would um, so I think it you know we continue to look at with events with event venues you know what are some options can we look at outdoor options and can that add a layer in there and what do those plans look like um, we continue down that path and this is a uh, this may be a question for Dr. Shaw, but um, back to Penobscot County and community transmission. How will it be determined? How will it be determined that Penobscot County no longer has community transmission, so that we can potentially open sooner? Um, where's that? How yeah. is that information made? There's a there's a medical definition for that that I, is uh, I can get to you. Um, they give us an update every morning on numbers, community transmission markets, those types of things. We don't define those ourselves. Um, we'll take a few more questions. I know, Commissioner, you have a very busy, busy schedule um, and you're homeschooling on top of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate uh, your time, but if you do have a question, let's, let's give this another five minutes. Are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, it's different questions. fractions, Deb. What? Anything to keep me from fractions. Yeah, thank you. We don't do that during the day. Fractions are morning and night for no, our Right. No. Oh my gosh. I have great respect. Um, while we're 
waiting for any any further questions to come in. I just I, I also want to let people know again um, the how to how to connect with your department, how to get information. If they have questions about the checklist, if they're confused about anything, uh, what's what's their best resource? So um, answers dot uh, business dot answers at at main gov is the best way for kind of specific questions. We have new FAQ sheets up that will answer most questions, I think. So we'd encourage people to go there first um, to try to get their answers quickly. If not, kind of then, then I would go to Business Answers. Uh, there's a phone number and or an email address. But if there are suggestions around guidelines or guideline changes or any of that, if you can put that into the portal, that allows us to kind of track and keep that moving. All right, thank you. And you do... Um, a weekly update, which I find very helpful. Uh, the, the time and dates sometimes have to move around, um, which I completely understand. Uh, but I really would encourage people to join you on those webinars. Um, in fact, the governor joined you last week. Uh, yes. And it's a great, again, it's a great opportunity to just ask your questions. This is not certainly this is an evolving, changing day by day process. So you may have different questions two days from now or two weeks from now. Um, so can people subscribe to the, the DECD uh, email to, to receive notification of when you're holding those events? They can, if you go to either our website or our Facebook page, you can register for the event and then you get an email, uh, a login email information. Um, yeah, and I apologize that they do move around some. Um, we're gonna make a consistent change so it's not at the same time as the governor's press conference because that a lot of times we're getting pulled into those and so that's part of that change occasionally like last week it was we knew we were going to do this rural announcement on friday and wanted to have it after that rural announcement because it didn't make sense to have you know a thousand people in rome and not tell them something one day and then the next day tell people so um sometimes it moves around for that but i think we'll move it so it's not in conflict with the governor's press conference or dr shaw's press conference um time and then try to keep it as stable as we can, but know that occasionally it'll move because there's a there's a reason that we have to move it. I completely understood. And um, again, I think they're really helpful um, to just, especially when the governor makes an announcement and then you can answer all the questions that everybody has after that yeah. announcement. And you're just, you're, you're very transparent and it's, it's wonderful. Um, two questions have come in. Okay, hang on. Some of these you've asked, um, but let's get back to that question of where would we submit a proposal if we would like DECD to look at our particular business or at this time, are those individual conversations not something that you're looking at? Can you just, can you circle back to that answer? Yeah, any of that should go into the portal um and we will either aggregate it with other people in the sector to make decisions and kind of set guidelines in that um and if it's an individual exception um to the extent that we can we'll make sure somebody gets back to them uh, that takes a lot longer honestly we're trying to get through some of these big groupings but if somebody has a very specific issue get it in there we'll we'll get back to you as soon as we can with it um, and, but a lot of times what I would say is if you submitted information into the portal, just because you haven't immediately heard back from somebody doesn't mean somebody's not reading it. Um, they're all getting read, they're getting aggregated, they're getting used. Um, the, it's the one-offs that a lot of times get just put in a parking lot because they, they don't fit in these larger groups that are trying to get moved through the system um, quickly. Um, different topic are there are there any opportunities to provide services or make products the state needs to respond to COVID-19 and where would we find those opportunities yeah so depending on what type of business you are um, main MEP so the main extension manufacturing extension partners um, has a list on their website that is here are the standards here are the materials you have to use in some cases here are the plans to do the work um, and that's a great place to go, I would say, is a good place to start. Um, and again, that's Maine MEP. Um, yep. Uh, let me see if, I can Google yeah. it. if you Google Maine MEP, it'll come up, but 
I don't know what their web page is. That's their, that's what they focus on is manufacturing, manufacturers. It's actually, so that's yeah, mainmep.org. Okay, mainmep.org. Awesome. Great. Uh, let's see. Any other questions come in? If you have a question, um, put it in the uh, Q&A. Uh, Charlie Sund is posting those for me to look at. Um, the, uh, um, the governor typically is with the, the CDC update a couple times a week. Um, and you've been on there, uh, uh, other commissioners have, have attended. Um, I find now, I mean, my, my day revolves around two o'clock, right? <laughs> I think we're all really tuning into that. Um, you probably can't say anything, but is, can we expect any, any further updates in the next week or so from your department or the governor around reopening? Um. I, I don't have a good answer to that right now. Certainly there are ongoing discussions every day about, you know, what are we seeing? What could we potentially do? How do we keep things moving forward? Um, you know, it's interesting when the, the there is a, um, a pre-release that goes out to say who's going to be at the press conference so that it triggers kind of those types of questions, I think is why they do that. Um, so usually that can show you what, what the basic content of any session is going to be if you don't you know if you don't have an interest in a per particular sector you know you can kind of you can do that i think also the uh, i know the main cdc on their web page if you scroll down about halfway you can see the the cdc news conference um mm -hmm. it's posted usually within an hour after um yep after the conference airs. So if you miss the live event at two, and you can also click there and see prior, um, prior news conferences. So if you wanna see any of those updates. Um, yep. um, what, what would you like, is there anything that we can do, more that we can do for you um, as a chamber, as a business community? Um, what, how can we help? Yeah, so I think there are a couple of things. Thanks for, thanks for asking. Um, I think there are a couple of things. One is, right, we know this is an incredibly difficult time for businesses. And so obviously one angle of that is getting businesses up and running, right? That's that's one way to do this. Even up and running, some of them will be running at, at minimal capacities. And for, for, for lots of them, it may be enough to kind of be a bridge forward, but for a lot of them, it won't be. And so one of the, one of the things we're trying to understand better as we look to the future is, what kind of support can can be offered like what what specifically is helpful you know this first round of federal funding uh looked at payroll protection and paycheck protection and i think that was really helpful to a lot of businesses and we had 80 times the the amount of money went going out through sba in three weeks that we've had in something like seven years or something just extraordinary so you know businesses saw that opportunity nonprofits saw that opportunity i think jumped on it um, as we try to think about what's next um, and what are these next steps, we're trying to understand what would be most helpful. Again, I don't know that we, you know, we, we are just trying to work on finding and aggregating solutions for, for businesses in a way that is most helpful. Um, and so feedback directly from businesses is usually a good way to get that. You know, we're hearing from people that have capital intense and high debt from capital and uh, expense, um, things like that. So I think we're open to trying to consider what that looks like, maybe additionally from payroll, because payroll, there's been some payroll support. If businesses have thoughts or suggestions about that, should they um, funnel that again through the portal on the webpage? They could, or Deb, if you wanna try to aggregate some thoughts and we can work on that, that would be great. Yeah, we can do that. We did have a question earlier um, related to that, uh, if the state would be providing any kind of financial support uh, for businesses that have incurred additional expense um, and will incur additional expenses reopening and um, and becoming compliant with um, the checklists and the recommendations. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no path for that right now. Um, I do think, you know, I, there's a lot of recognition that that's that that's an, uh, out there. Um, but there's no path for it at this point. Um, well, good. I think our 
I, we've covered a lot of ground, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anything that we haven't asked you or that you want to uh, repeat for any clarification or words of wisdom as we wrap up? I don't think so. You know, I think, um, I think we continue to try to find that balance every day of public health and economic health. Um, you know, they are so intertwined. There was a lot of debate and discussion, or, you know, early on about it's only one or it's the other. And the reality is they're so intertwined that they're, it's almost impossible to separate them, right? Without good economic health, you don't have good public health. And without good public health, it's really difficult to have economic stability. So, um, you know, I think we continue to work that balance as we go um, and we'll try to make adjustments as appropriate. Thank you. And I, I just want to, um, I just want to let everybody know that you, you've been very accessible um, to me and to other chambers and, and associations and businesses. I've had, um, <clears throat> the website has a lot of good information, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> um, but I've had some specific sort of one-off questions from businesses that I needed help with and, and you were, um, you responded very quickly. Uh, and I appreciate that, the businesses appreciate that. Um, so I, really appreciate your transparency and accessibility during this time and the department as a whole. Um, and we'll keep sharing the information with our members about um, any updates uh, as they occur and just remind people to submit suggestions and ideas. And this is a daily continuing evolving um, situation. And you are, you are listening to that. Um, feedback and, and certainly fully recognize kind of the challenge that the that that this coronavirus is, has put right on our economy and, and on individual businesses and and um you know that creates right we understand that and and the urgency that that so um we'll keep we'll keep working through it thank you thank All you right. so much for your time uh, we recorded this so we will post this on our um Bangor region chamber facebook page uh so you can watch it later uh, and let's let's do this again. Absolutely. You have some time. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. And thank thanks, you. thanks to all of you who joined us um, this morning and um, Shelly Sun, who's been working behind the scenes to, there she is, uh, produce this and, and share your questions with us. Um, certainly there's more to come uh, and we'll just keep working together day by day and um, get through this. So thanks again. Have a good rest of your day. and. Um, uh, homeschooling. <laughs> Thank you.